The Duke of Cambridge comforted young children today at a cancer hospital visited by his late mother Princess Diana the year before she died, as he and his wife Kate continued their historic royal tour of Pakistan. Prince William and Kate traveled from the capital Islamabad to the bustling city of Lahore today, where they had a busy schedule including a trip to the Shah Khan Memorial Cancer Hospital and Research Center. At the state-of-the-art cancer facility located in the center of Lahore this afternoon, they visited the children's ward to spend time with patients undergoing treatment at the hospital, and spoke to a number of their families. William and Kate met five-year-old Mohammed Samir in the chemotherapy ward, a boy who has Hodgkin lymphoma but wants to be a soldier. The Duke played with his fishing game as the pair tried to hoop toy fish. Among the other children they met was Wafia Rimini, a seven-year-old girl from over the border in Afghanistan, who has a kidney tumor. She wore a matching toy tiers with the Duchess and hosted a toy tea party on her bed. Wafia wants to be a doctor and also showed the royals her toy medical set. The hospital was built by Pakistan's now Prime Minister, former cricketer Imran Khan, in memory of his late mother who died from cancer in 1985. During his mother's illness, he witnessed the plight of poor cancer patients in his country's hospitals and vowed to build a facility that would be accessible to all, regardless of the status. The center opened its doors in 1994 and in February 1996, 18 months before her tragic death, Diana, Princess of Wales visited accompanied by Mr. Khan and his former wife, Jemima Goldsmith, a close friend of the royal. Diana was on a private visit to raise funds for the hospital, as well as meet the family of her great love, Pakistani surgeon Hasna Khan, but had been advised not to undertake the trip due to political tensions with the UK. She was movingly photographed cradling a young patient receiving cancer treatment at the time, which she later cited as one of her most cherished images. Today, an Afghan girl being treated for cancer wore matching tiaras with the Duchess as she hosted a toy tea party for the royal couple on her hospital bed. Wafia carefully poured the Duke and Duchess pretend cups of tea from her plastic tea set, as they stopped at her bedside visiting the Shah Khan Hospital. The visit saw the royal couple follow in the footsteps of the Duke's mother, who twice visited the hospital in the 90s when it was being set up by former cricketer Imran Khan. Wafia, aged seven and from Parwan province north of Kabul, had carefully arranged her tea set and brought two plastic, bejeweled tiaras in advance for the visit. Her father calls her princess and she likes to wear a crown. Now she is looking forward to meeting a real princess, her brother, Hedyachol Arihmani, said as they waited for the couple to arrive at the children's chemotherapy ward. When the couple sat down beside her bed, Wafia offered the Duchess the tiara to wear and the Duchess accepted. The couple were told that Wafia, the youngest of nine children with four older brothers and four older sisters, wants to be a doctor. She also showed them her toy medical set laid out on her bed. Wafia has a kidney tumor and is on her second round of chemotherapy, after the illness reappeared following the first course. Doctors said they are optimistic about her recovery. The couple also played with another boy, five-year-old Mohammed, who was being treated at the hospital for Hodgkin's lymphoma. When the couple arrived at his bedside they were told the boy, from a Duke district in Pakistan, wants to join the army. The Duke picked up Mohammed's toy planes and a toy tank. Do you want to be a soldier? The Duke asked. When the boy appeared curious about the press photographers, the Duke said, he's looking at all the cameras. That's Arthur there, he said pointing to Arthur Edwards. The Duke and Muhammad then played the boys' fishing game, competing to hook plastic fish from a revolving turntable. Muhammad easily beat the Duke. Samir is doing rather well. It's very difficult, some of them don't even open their mouths, the Duke complained. The couple were later shown a suite where adults are given radiation treatment. Imran Khan, now Prime Minister, founded the charity hospital after his mother, Shaukat Khanim, died from cancer in 1985. His mother's illness showed him the lack of cancer care in Pakistan and the need for specialized treatment, he said later. The hospital opened its doors at the end of 1994. 
Mr. Khan encouraged his friends to help with the fundraising and Princess Diana made two private visits to the hospital, in 1996 and 1997 to help. The hospital still relies on donations. Dr. Asim Yusuf, chief medical officer at the hospital, guided the princess around the hospital for her two visits and today showed her son around. Recalling Princess Diana's visits, he said, we were all struck by how friendly she was. How she was able to put everyone at ease. We were all very nervous about what we should say and what she would ask and how we should address her. The minute she came into the room, she lit up the room obviously and also she was just so friendly and down to earth. You could tell that she was genuinely interested in the people she was meeting. Now showing her son around made him feel a lot older, he joked. It's a great honor and a privilege for us to be welcoming Prince William and the Duchess of Cambridge today. It's a special honor that they have chosen to come and see our hospital again. The 195-bed hospital accepts around 10,000 new cancer patients each year, including patients from neighboring Afghanistan. Around 75 to 80 percent of patients receive free treatment. Mr. Khan remains chairman of the honorary board of governors. Also today, the Duke today made an emotional visit one of the world's biggest mosques on his five-day tour of Pakistan, nearly 30 years after his late mother Princess Diana made a trip there. Prince William and his wife Kate, wearing a green shawl work kameez by Mahin Khan and headscarf, looked around the Badshah Mosque, which is the most iconic Islamic site in Lahore, set in the heart of the walled city. The royals toured the mosque and courtyard, before joining a discussion with faith leaders to understand how they are promoting interfaith harmony within their communities. The Duke wore a cream linen suit and black socks with his shoes off, while the Duchess went barefoot as they visited what is one of the country's most historic sites. William is following in the footsteps of both his parents with the visit. His mother Diana, Princess of Wales visited the site in 1991 and it was also included in the 2006 royal tour of the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall. The couple were at the Badshah Mosque in the city, located to the west of the historic Lahore Fort, which was built by the Emperor Aurangzeb in 1671. Kate and William were invited to take off their shoes as the Duchess pulled her scarf respectfully into position. The couple then walked through the courtyard towards the mosque, the most iconic Islamic site in Lahore set in the heart of the walled city. Inside they were given a brief history of the building before being invited to sit down cross-legged with a group of religious leaders and specialists for adjoining a discussion with faith leaders to understand how they are promoting interfaith harmony within their communities. As they sat down a prayer from the Holy Quran in Arabic was read out to which the couple listened intently. Taking part in the discussion were, Right Relevant Humphrey Sarfaraz Peters, the moderator of the Church of Pakistan and the Bishop of Peshawar, Azhar Ali Abidi, a Shia academic, Ramesh Singh, a member of the Pakistan Gurdwara Great Band Hack Committee, Sikh, Dr. Ramesh Kumar, patron and chief of the Pakistan Hindu Council, and Dr. Aisha Lagari, a Sunni Muslim scholar. William is understood to have asked a question of the group about how interfaith issues are promoted amongst young people. Dr. Aisha Legari said afterwards that the couple had been interested and empathetic listeners, saying, you have people who are interested listeners and people who are also empathetic and they were very empathetic. We were really pleased. They were very responsive and very charming. The royals were welcomed to the Badshah Mosque by Imam Abdul Kabir Azad and the honorary consul, UK Fakir Ajazuddin, who accompanied them across the vast square leading to the central building. Inside, the couple were introduced to a group of scholars and religious leaders sat down on cushions, with the Imam proudly telling William that his son Hafiz Abdul Razak who read a passage from the Quran. William said, We've been learning all about the family history. Gates sat with her head down, William pensive beside her. The first to speak was Dr. Lagari, a Sunni Muslim scholar, explaining the verse. I was telling then how it is compulsory for us to respect other religions. God sent a messenger to every part of the globe and peace is to be attained through the process of growth. When we don't give importance to negative emotions like jealousy, violence and greed and we move towards a higher level of being where we are more loving and compassionate. It is part of our belief to respect other religions. 
she said, they were interested in finding out about how the youth thought about interfaith interactions. The session was moderated by Iona Thomas, political counselor at the British High Commission. We talked about how each faith teach acceptance. Then, we talked about the history of Pakistan and how when it was founded, she said. We also talked about things that you can do to bring people together. The bishop talked about getting children to play cricket on mixed teams. And the Duke asked quite a lot of questions about what more can be done about religious tolerance. When they left they were told by Honorary Consul, UK Fakir Ajazuddin, if there's one word to describe your visit it is joy. You have radiated joy wherever you have been. And the Duke said, we are very happy people. Earlier, the Duke and Duchess showed off their cricketing skills while playing Pakistan's national sport today as they laughed while going into batting bowl during their five-day tour of the country. Their Royal Highness is excitedly joined in a match with children who are participating in the British Council's Dosti program, Dosti means friendship in Urdu, at the National Cricket Academy in Lahore. They met some of Pakistan's cricketing legends as they learn about the program promoting sport as an integral part of child development, encouraging social integration, increased self-esteem and skills development. William and the Duchess both took turns hitting some soft balls in a game. There were cheers as the Duke hit a six, while Kate was caught out twice after half a dozen balls, but they were deliberately dropped by the catchers. The competitive couple often face off against each other in sporting events, including at a sailing regatta in the summer. After both taking a turn at the wicket, the couple high-fived the boys and girls they were playing with. The Duke and Duchess both admitted they could improve their cricket as they took part in the game with children and cricketing legends. Being the national game of Pakistan, there was pressure on them to perform and William rose to the challenge, scoring six. Kate. Meanwhile was caught out twice, but locals remained impressed with her enthusiastic efforts to hit the ball. She had sensibly swapped her heels for a white pair of trainers. To make matters more challenging, female cricket stars Sana Mir and Aisha Safar were bowling. The two teams had a mix of boys and girls from underprivileged backgrounds aged between 10 to 14 years. Some of Pakistan's biggest cricketing legends were also present and playing, including Hussain Ali, Azhar Ali, and Shaheen Shah Afridi. Walker Yunus, former captain of the Pakistan cricket team, was umpiring and was excited to see the couple as he had already met the Queen Dwise. He said, I'm glad that they came, it was a great encouragement for these young kids. On their skills, he joked, they probably need some homework. William told me he has played a lot of tennis, and that he really only played cricket when he was younger. But he said he can work on it. He said that the couple hadn't seemed nervous about their performance, saying, I was more tense than he was. Upon arrival, William appeared to be feeling the 86 F, 30 C, heat and remarked to the children he was introduced to, Is it warm for cricket today? Two of the youngsters, Muhammad and Zarab, told the couple how they both had issues with confidence and discipline but now feel very empowered. Fiza Abid, a cricket coach and manager of the women's cricket team, said, the couple seemed really happy to be there and asked what other sports the children liked. Gate asked how much sports helps these young people and we told her how much it helps. Atiba, 14, asked the Duchess if she liked cricket. Abid, who was helping to translate, said, the Duchess said she liked cricket, but isn't to tennis and swimming. She said she needs to practice cricket more. They were also asked if they liked Pakistan and said yes they do, that it was a really beautiful and vibrant country. She added that she had been impressed by how well the couple had played, William was very good, he got a 6, Kate was good too but got caught out wise. In a speech. Chairman of the club Asan Mani told the couple that the day would be something that they, the children, will never forget. As a token of our friendship, three cricket bats were given to the couple for George, Charlotte, and Louis. William joked about the one for Louis, saying, he'll grow into it. The Dosti program is a sports for peace initiative that aims to break social barriers and promote community cohesion. It helps children facing challenges such as gang-related crime or low school retention. 
It promotes sports as an integral part of children's lives and demonstrates the benefits to health, social integration, and self-esteem. There will be an opportunity to speak to the children to hear about how sports have helped their everyday lives and community.